I don't often talk about how big a fan of the Addams Family I am. I love the 60s show, the 90s movies, and I've even got copies of less good versions, like the weird 70s one where Jodie Foster played Pugsley and they go on a road trip, and the recent animated film. Through watching all these, I've come to a few conclusions about why some work and others don't, beyond talent in front of and behind the camera. The 60s show relied on a juxtaposition between the Adamses and the normal sitcom people who made up most of the rest of the cast. It was a counterpoint to the sitcoms of the era, which has ironically aged so well slash so badly that today it's been inverted. The Adamses are far more uncommon today with mainstream American culture than the normal people in the show do. So the show is still good, but it's a very different experience today than it was in original airing. One of the reasons the 90s live action TV show failed was that it tried to recreate the 60s formula without updating the Adamses themselves. Meaning we had Adamses who were no longer surprising and a bunch of twats just overreacting to them. The 90s movie remake and its sequel did the juxtaposition thing too, juxtaposing the Adamses with normal PG movie characters, but they also did something new. They took most of the worst normal people and made them grotesques, made them as weird as the Adamses, but in a very different direction. A Lynchian, uncanny valley version of normality. This is most obvious with the camp counsellors and values. Now, the recent animated film took this idea and ran with it. Almost everyone who wasn't an Adams was like this. And while there is one approach to updating the concept, I don't think it was very successful, so I'd like to suggest another. Basically return to the 60s juxtaposition idea and juxtapose the Adamses with normal people from an average drama today. Which means taking all the dark, twisted, bloody and murderous stuff from the earlier versions of the Adamses and bring it to the forefront. Try to make the Adamses a mildly shocking counterpoint to the average family for today. So here's my suggestions for how to do this and some casting ideas. First up, it's going to be a weird and dark drama with black comedy. Gomez and Morticia are still deeply into each other, but more so, if that is possible. They're extremely sexually open, both are pansexual, they love to flirt with almost everyone, and semi-frequently pick up thirds, fourths, and even fifths to join them. Of course, their sex is so vigorous, BDSM and blood play heavy, that occasionally the guests end up dead, accidentally or deliberately. This is a direct update of Gomez and Morticia being groundbreaking in their frank depiction of romance and sexuality for an American sitcom of the 60s, mixed with the dark murder stuff that was occasionally hinted at in the movies, such as the possibility that Gomez killed his own mother. Love, hate, hate, love. Like for Mama, no? But I didn't hate my mother, it was an accident. Isn't he a lady killer? Acquitted. Now, I'm not suggesting that sex was involved in that, but the movie Adams has killed people, and this show would embrace that facet of the characters. Gomez, I imagine, is a guy who takes delight in almost everything he does. He's the id, and I see him as an early 20th century old money type, transatlantic accent, looking and sounding like an early movie star, kind of Rudolph Valentino, in the same way that Morticia in the 90s movies was made to look like a 1930s movie star. Take the affluenza that's central to the character and make it a lot less whimsical. He genuinely doesn't understand why it's not okay for the poor people they pick up to die from time to time, and he has the money to pay off anyone. But it's not malicious. Without all the maladjustment and stuff, he'd be the good guy that the other Gomez's usually are. For casting, I was thinking either Oscar Isaac or Evan Peters, and if you want an example of what performance I want, look no further than James March from American Horror Story Hotel. Look at this suit I'm wearing. It was covered in bile, literal bile from a Pullman I knife the other day. It's like nothing was ever there. <laughs> Felicitations to the happy couple. Of course. I know everything. I have nothing but time and imagination. Absinthe! Our customary libation. You see, he doesn't bear any of the distinctive March features. Diamond jaw, strong piercing eyes, a flair for the dramatic. My trophy room. Why is it so dark in here? Some things you're not yet ready to see. No! You can scream as loud as you like. In fact, I prefer it. Morticia is the opposite of Gomez. Austere, stoic, deadpan, measured, nigh unflappable. Keep the 1930s movie star aesthetic from the movies. Like the other Morticias, she's the real head of the family. The main difference between her and the earlier ones is that she's stricter. She smiles less, and any nasty stuff she does isn't kept off screen. 
For casting, I suggest Christina Ricci, and for an example of how she should be played, here's Aunt Zelda from The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Mm, I remember the week before my dark baptism. It felt as if my real life were finally beginning. I barely slept. Shame they decided against a closed casket. We haven't had long pig for dinner in ages. Coming out marvelously this year! It was on Hilda. She annoyed me, so I killed her and buried her in the yard. Marvelous. A young man has just been stabbed. Praise Satan. Spirited child's play, Faustus. I never killed a child. Other than your sister. Sabrina, cases of actual demonic possession are extremely rare, despite what the false god and his propaganda machine would have you believe. For Fester, I want to take his existing social awkwardness and sexual oddness and take it further. And in the 90s movies, Fester fucked Thing and possibly had a hand puppet fetish. I've dreamed that sometime maybe there might be someone for me. There's thing. Oh, I know, I know. But I want more. Legs, elbows, head. Gomez told me no giggling. And? No hand puppets. Probably because he'd been fucking thing. With Fester, I'm taking inspiration from Ed Gein. Also socially awkward, also sexually odd, and also enjoys howling at the moon. <laughs> Fester is pleasant, he wants to be liked, but he's also terrifying. He's searching for a wife and kidnaps potential ones and invariably they end up dead. So he started taking his favourite pieces from each one to create his ideal woman, and is using the rest of the bodies for his many projects around the house. For casting, I'm going for Vincent D'Onofrio. He's got the head, he can do scary, socially awkward, pathetic and weird. And he's got the height that would make him truly intimidating. Grandmama is a witch. She worships long forgotten gods and performs all kinds of rituals that keep the family protected, rich and successful. She's literally ancient, a pre-Christian, and trying to get the later generations into the family's traditional beliefs. Imagine an aging evangelical grandmother living with her increasingly secular family and all the friction that causes. But instead of church, it's worshipping her long forgotten Eastern European gods while dancing naked around a bonfire and sacrificing local pets and the occasional neighbour. And as for whether she's related to Gomez or Morticia, it changes from the TV show to the movie, the continuities are different. In this version, she's related to both. But she's over 2,000 years old and she's technically not a close relative. For casting, I'm thinking of Frances Conroy from Joker, American Horror Story, and Six Feet Under. There's a reason she's pretty much cornered the market on frail but scary and fabulous old woman in the last decade. For Wednesday and Pugsley, I've noticed that there's a tendency for one or the other to get sidelined, usually Pugsley. So I'd like to take what was done in the 90s film with the sociopathic Wednesday, always trying to kill her brother and have it work. She murders him and then he's kept around for Wednesday to resurrect and kill again when she feels like it, or the plot demands it. Beyond that, you can't improve on perfection, so Christina Ricci's take on Wednesday stays completely sociopathic, but I think she should take after Grandmama, start learning rituals and magic and stuff. As for Pugsley, maybe he was a fairly normal kid with fairly normal friends, and an ongoing plot is Wednesday attempting to keep his death from them. As for casting, I'd go with unknowns. As for Lurch, I've kind of come up with a blank on him. I think it would be good if he was an actual reanimated corpse who's possibly been in Grandmama's employ for centuries, but I also like Ted Cassidy's sassy take on the character in the 60s. Maybe possible to do both. As for casting, I'm not sure, but if I wanted to annoy even more fans, I suggest making him a woman and casting the six foot eight Amazon Eve. She's been in Hemlock Grove, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and American Horror Story. And finally, on to the thing. I'd like to go back to a much earlier idea for the character. Instead of a disembodied hand, or arm as he was in the TV show, he's a whole being that lives inside the walls. The only part we see clearly are the hand slash arm, and the rest is so nightmarish that anyone who saw his full body would go insane from fright. Is he an enslaved Lovecraftian beast? A creation of grandmamas? Something else? I'm sure we'd find out if the show was ever made. In a way, that is that. My ideas for reimagining the Addams Family is a dark as hell weird drama with black comedy. Tone-wise, something like the chilling adventure of Sabrina, with plenty of casual blood in camp. Of course, I have another idea. Give it to the League of Gentlemen. Reese Shearsmith as Gomez, Steve Pemberton as Fester, and Mark Gatiss as a Lurch. And just let them do what they want with that. Mm -hmm.